Hey, Travis. Alright, let's stack these aside. We'll deal with the individual boards later. Hey, Daniel, DJ. Kind of curious, Daniel, do you ever get people calling you Paul? Because I get a lot of people calling me Daniel. My name is not Daniel, my name is Paul. But instead, people somehow mysteriously persist in calling me Daniel. And I just actually does not really fit into my mind such name. All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, let's get some metho down. I'll soothe the psychological pain. A sweet aroma of ethanol in the air. Ah, funnily enough though, it actually more reminds me as my reminds me of my time as a kid playing with um, old steam engine toys because we would use methylated spirits as the fuel and uh, so whenever I get a whiff of the metho I think of my childhood wasting lots and lots of methylated spirits making a steam engine go around in circles pointlessly at that too but hey it was entertainment hey here we go Jason's here for those wondering about the title, it is because Jason, from Unofficial Mac, has sent these to me because he likes to torture me. Because thus far, I have failed to succeed in a single one of his challenges. He's essentially just making sure that I don't get tall poppy syndrome. Reminding me that I am a mortal with limitations. Okay, so we've got a bad battery to start with. Fair enough. I say ran out of 47 microfarads, 63 caps. What size? 47.63. It's got to be at least a 805 size, surely. I don't know. Yeah, what's the physical size? Alright, let's plug this in and see what happens. Hey, Wayne Taylor. We need a bigger display, but okay, so this just blanks out. <laughs> blanks out, resets, blanks out, resets, okay. Um, since this is a computer system, it does get a proper code on it. Hey, atrophy. Alrighty then. Well, blanked out. I'm just going to draw it straight from the uh, straight from the chassis. Oh, you got to be kidding me! I have misplaced my visual enhancement apparatus, also known as glasses. I do know where they are. I'll be right back. got my glasses now I can actually see what I'm doing it may or may not help okay, let's get the usual array of screwdrivers so you want a t4 a t5 a t8 a pair of tweezers that should do the trick we hope oh yeah almost failed straight out of the gun out of the gate rather 
we got to disconnect this power cord flex so given that it's doing a very abrupt uh, re, uh, restart loop probably got something very bad with one of the CD3215s uh, that or a damaged I think maybe a damaged uh, 3 uh, what is it 3v3 bus or a bad ISL I'm gonna look at it visually first and see what we've got before I try to get too uh, ahead of myself yeah come on up and out It was very nice of Jason to send these challenges to me and I hope that I can well actually come through with some success of course you know, it could be that the arrival of these boards uh, could be considered the doom bringer for the next week let's hope not So many little screws. You've got to be careful with that on off button switch uh, flex. If you mess that up, you lose your touch ID. Um, atrophy? No, <laughs> um, no. I'll give a big, big pass on the iFixit drivers. The wearer ones are definitely vastly, in my opinion, for me, they are vastly superior. Um, I would sooner also revert to using Weha before I go to iFixit. I mean, it's not that iFixit explicitly are bad. It's just that I. Um, prefer the feel, the quality, etc. of the wearers and the Weha. The main reason why I don't use Weha in general is just simply because I prefer the form factor and everything of these ones compared to so this is the Weha assembly, yeah, they've got a more single taper outward to the bulb at the top whereas the wearer have the you know the um, fingertip bulge here so it's, that's just more of a personal preference than a quality preference Miles your money is on the ISL alright hey wrong way I really should start a betting service. Do the stream, put your bets in. See who uh, who gets it right. For a long time I used some rather heavy, um, I think it was Beku or something like that. I'll have a look at what they are in a moment. But yeah, there was a, there was a rather heavy set of drivers that I was using. They were aluminium or metal anoid, you know, um, treated. And I was quite happy with them. But after a while I started to get a little bit concerned. I was chewing through the tips a little bit quickly. It could have been partially my own fault with getting impatient with certain jobs and I was getting worried about the fact that due to their weight when I would 
every now and then drop them onto a circuit board I was worried that I could actually risk damaging the parts and it was from that point that I decided it was time for me to change to a primarily plastic bodied screwdriver and I must say that the tips do last a very long time on these units hey Catherine hey Keith what am I missing here nothing oh yeah I can see where we're gonna have problems Prob maybe hopefully fingers crossed certainly the battery is gonna have to be replaced anyway I'll show you the ones I used to use those of you who have been watching for a long time will recognize these things okay so like these these are the Weha ones that I bought and they're perfectly good but I just didn't like the handle feel but these are the ones that I was using before uh, these Beku brand and yeah the, I was perfectly happy with them occasionally the o-rings would pop off that'd be a bit annoying but they did a pretty good job and I like the form feel but um, yeah the the mass of them was the problem because if you doing work on it and it tilts over then the weight of it can actually end up causing you know, a part to be cracked or broken and as you can see I've got quite a lot of them quite a large number of them but I just decided uh, a few Christmases ago I said that's it so I'm converting over to um, the wearers and that was the end of that and they've just sort of basically stayed in that container ever since. Oh, Sonia. Try and apply something more low tech. Two stroke carburetor that refuses to take in fuel. Uh, there is nothing low tech about a two stroke carburetor. At least a modern one, anyway. I mean, it's a little different if you're just talking about a Venturi. But, um,. Those things are the devil's snare. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting it because of this particular model of board and when I saw the fluff and junk on the edge there, that's quite signature. I'm not actually sure exactly what model this is. I don't know if it's a 239 or a, yeah, 850. Okay, 850 it is. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, you're up early, Patrick. Thank you for the two dollars. Early for New York, I must say. It's a problem with the metering system. Diaphragm doesn't seem to be activating the non-return valve. Oh, yeah, yeah. See that—that's where two strokes can be a complete and utter outrageous nightmare. And you have things like, is the tension on my reed valves right, you know, or am I, um, are they not springing back quickly enough, and, ah, uh, it's, yeah, performance two strokes is definitely, it's an art in itself. Alrighty, we've got a few possible dud caps there too. It's like I'm almost thinking this one could also be out of action, but definitely that one is. No, no questions about that. And we'll take out that one there as well. So we've got, I would say as a preliminary task, we'll take these three caps and go from there. And hopefully I will have my first win with the unofficial Mac torture chamber. Oh, Ryobi Whippersnipper. Okay, that, that just goes straight into the bin. Not because it's Ryobi, but because it's a Whippersnipper. Those things are just pure hell. My father-in-law, he loves to... Yeah, he likes his Whippersnipper, but he has a tendency to buy these two-stroke ones, and oh my goodness, they just pile up in his workshop. 
There's another one down here that I'll replace too. Personally, I changed my... I had a Honda 425 four-stroke with a snipper. And that thing was really good. Okay, we're going to have to replace the CD32 as well. There's corrosion on the um, on the grid wires, so that's going to have to come off. You know how occasionally we get with um, SMCs when they get corroded on the edge? We want this one as well. So yeah, I had a Honda 425 and it was a very good machine. But I have subsequently replaced it with a Victor 82 volt electric whippersnipper. And I am much, much happier with the electric. It doesn't quite have the same power as the Honda but the thing is I can just go out there there's no oil to worry about there's you know for the lubrication of the system there's no fuel to worry about there's no overheating there's no air filters it's just put the battery in make sure there's um, line in it and away you go it's a vastly more pleasant experience particularly when you just got a quick job you just want to quickly you know, clear away a little bit of edging near the shed or something like that but at the same time I've had it running for an hour non-stop I well, shouldn't say non-stop yeah I go through two battery packs for, for an hour but yeah when the battery pack goes low I just swap it out and I keep going which is great for the weekends or something when you don't want to drive down to the petrol station. Oh, Jason, thank you for the 10. <laughs> You're not supposed to be sending me money for this. Well, I also have an 82 volt. Uh, my I've got two lawn mowers now that are 82 volt Victors. And I've got a still, well you've seen my chainsaw, so that's electric as well. I am much happier with the electric yard tools. Yeah, I don't use them as a job day in, day out. So for me it's a case of, as long as I've got about two hours worth of power, I'm good. Our uh, fuel prices are around about two dollars ten a litre at the moment. That's Australian two ten, which is fun because I'll probably have to go to Townsville tomorrow too. So that's going to be an expensive trip in terms of fuel. Oh, that reminds me, the, um, the PlayStation power supply arrived, and the PlayStation now works. But it is at this point that I realise I don't really need a PlayStation. <laughs> So I'm probably just going to sell it. Uh, Travis, you'd be surprised. My 82 volt system, it chews through very tough, very long grass. They are not anemic systems. They really do have a lot of power. I mean, the grass out here is, you know, it grows fast, it grows thick. It's very unfriendly stuff. And my electric stuff has no trouble going through it. Well, I don't really want to invest in the PlayStation because of the fact that I still have to, I would have to buy a pair of controllers. So that's 150, 160 bucks. And... Yeah, so that's already a fair bit of money. And then I'll probably get a 
charge station for them, well I don't have to, that's only $20. And then you have to get games, so that's more money. Whereas the one game that we really had any sort of explicit interest of getting a PlayStation for was Tekken. And I've since found out that Tekken is available on the PC anyway. So I will probably just play it on the on the machine I've just done for a leader. Sell the PlayStation and use the money for something else. Well Travis, you've got to have several I usually I have a battery for every half hour. So it runs for half hour, change the battery, put the other ones on charge, and then you know, I basically never run out of batteries. I mean, I've got I've got uh, half an acre of nasty grass to keep under control. If I change my mind, I probably won't be changing my mind but we'll, we'll see I think at this point I just sort of I'm happy with the PC okay I've just got to get flex board view up it's funny Travis because I'm too lazy to go down to the petrol station and then fill up with fuel and pull on the starter cord and all that sort of stuff so it comes down to, I suppose, you know, what is your, what poison do you want to have to deal with? So um, I'm just looking through my boards at the moment, schematic. Okay, I've got to rotate that around. So we've got one, two, three, four caps. There we go, 10 microfarad 402s, alright, we're back on this train. In terms of catching fire of devices, I have uh, more had a problem with starting fires with the old petrol mowers because of the, you know, the heat of the engine with the exposed fins and things like that or grass getting in the fins and it starts smouldering and then it throws out a smouldering bit of grass and then that catches onto the tinder dry grass that I'm mowing. That's, yeah, it's been entertaining in that respect. Yeah, ride-ons are still perhaps a little bit behind. You can get electric ride-ons. Uh, I believe Ryobi make one at the moment. But the trouble is they actually use uh, SLA batteries or just lead acid effectively. So I'm not a big fan of that option. Had the starter on your mouse smack you square in the chest. <laughs> I can imagine that would. God damn it. Alright, this is also a 
I had a machine coming today that I was also working on and it was a disaster. Someone had already been at it and the things they had done to it was just unfortunate. Okay, so this one here is a 0.47 or 470 nanofarad 63201. I may have to go searching for that one. 470 nanofarad. One microfarad. And I don't think I can play loose and fast on this one. Yeah, I'm going to have to get it off a donor board. A death pump. Let's see, schematics. Okay, so we want 0.47632.01. I'm getting lazy here. I'm, I want it to bring up a 165 or a 34 or 37. I need to find a way to prioritize those two boards. Hey, 165. Let's see if it's legit though, or whether it's a merge. Ah, oh, it's a damned merge. Yeah, they got a 0.474 volt. That's no good. That's too big. Too big. Alright. 165 does not have it. Uh, 840. Grab it off the 840. Come here, 840. It's supposed to be there. Let me guess, I pulled out an 875. Well, maybe I can't read the schematic. Ah, that's it there. But it was just me not reading the board properly. How very normal. Hey, Loki. Oh, okay, Jason. So the caps you need are the ones from the 004613, 0426, you mean, yeah. Or the ISL, C9425, and the other five. Well, those caps are really annoying to try and get off, I think. Whenever you try to um, extract one from a donor board. They have a horrible tendency. They the ones there. They love to pop their lids. And every time you try to bring one across, it just yeah, you just hear it go pop, and it's like well can't use that one. You basically have to get them from new and then have to hand solder them, I think. Popping like corn. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. 
but yes, I am aware of that sort of behaviour. Speaking of which, something in here just popped, and no, it was not my backside. Okay, so we've got this cap here. And so one microfarad, 402, 35 volt. That's interesting that this 35 volt, they must have felt like 25, didn't give them the margin they wanted. Okay, let's see if we can find something that can come close. One microfarad six three. Well, that's useless. Wow. All right, we're gonna have to hunt that one down too. Uh, I should really be making a list of all the components that I do not have, and just order them. Keep ordering them until I no longer have to order them. Hey Tony W, good evening. Oh yeah, Miles. Tantalums stink terribly. It depends on how you destroy them too. There are like if you destroy them from heat, they stink pretty bad. If you destroy them from over voltage or reverse voltage, they explode and produce a beautiful yeah, uh, beautiful purple um, purple flame momentarily, but then they also stink after that. Okay, so 244s and 45s, so we'll, we'll take it from these, these are, the 244 and the 45, they are the dreaded 1534 boards, so anytime you can use a 1534 board is a good thing. Yeah, so this is a 45. I, I really do not feel like demonstrating. Ah, uh, not being scammed. God damn it. I've really got to do something about that. Okay, it seems like this board does not, in fact, have what I'm after. That's annoying. Uh, 281, la la la, 239. I got a 239, let's try that. Okay, at least that's legit. It makes sense that would have it because it's also, yeah, this is specific to the 3215s. So I'll just get a 329. Or well, whatever they call it, 239. And hopefully it's still around here somewhere. It should be that one there. We will know fairly quickly if that is in fact not the correct cap. Because it will... Like if that's a 6.3, it will very rapidly demonstrate a lot of anger as it's subjected to inappropriate voltages. Okay, we just put some syrup on it. Did I put solder on those pads? Yes, I did, yeah. Ah, I'll come back here. I'm trying to be careful because I don't actually want to dislodge that um, lid sensor. 
Okay. All right, so all that's left now is for us to put a replacement 3215 on there. And we'll make sure we put this one up the correct way, unlike our shenanigans from last night. Hey, Kato, I sent you a message on Twitter, but um, basically, yeah, the PlayStation works, but I don't really have any good use for it, so I'm probably going to sell it. Oh, shonky ass. Check it out. We have a complete ball missing there. Yep, brand new, my backside. Super shonky. Can you imagine someone putting that down and not having checked it for... Oh, this is what? This is almost as bad. This is an underfilled one. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use any of you. Let's try a brand new strip. Demand is so high that they don't even care to pretend that they're fakes. I should say that they're not fakes, they're just like, yeah, whatever, what are you going to do about it? I shouldn't say fakes, I just mean, you know, refurbished, reclaimed ones. Because you do get fake ones, I've had a few. But as far as I know, these should be genuines. In fact, probably the fact that they are refurbished tends to give you a little more confidence that they will be genuine. You didn't come on Xbox last night. What? I was, uh, I don't know. What was I doing? I was asleep. Jeez. Excessive demands. You seem like an overly attached person. And according to YouTube self-help guides, that means I have to distance myself from you. You already reflowed. Yes, you have. Streamers don't sleep, that's true. Oh, right, oh, you're talking to Travis. Oh, my bad. Feel free to punish Travis. He deserves it. He likes it. Yeah, let's check the other side now. Oh, creature. Whoa. What? Did you get a wasp in the face or something? We have had situations here where our little ones, they will eat a spicy fly, or they'll try to attack a spicy fly. And then, yeah, they do the whole puff up thing. See, we've got... That corrosion is pretty nasty around here. It should be okay under there. Check the other side. Yeah, the coder, it, um, it did arrive. And everything works fine. Boots, all the rest of it. But I've decided I'm probably just going to sell it because I don't have any controllers for it. I don't have any games or anything like that. So basically I'd have to spend another 200 odd bucks to get controllers and such. And then the only game that I immediately would think of playing on it is Tekken. But then I was told tonight and I found in Steam that I can actually get Tekken on the PC. So... I don't really have a compelling reason to actually keep the PlayStation anymore. All along I was thinking, oh well, you know, I want the PlayStation because at the very least I want to play Tekken. 
But now it's like, you may play Tekken on the PC. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. But yeah, glad it works, indeed. Uh, we're not really big gamers here. We we get very little relaxation time, as it were. And we either sit outside or... Well, I mean, at the moment... Ah, oh, frickin' fuck. God, God damn bug. It's still there somewhere, is it? <sighs> anyway, a, a bug flew into my glasses there, bounced off the lens straight into my eyeball. Goddamn Australia and North Queensland. I, I think YouTube should actually permit us to have a couple of extra swear words per stream simply because of the adverse conditions. Check out God of War. I have actually seen God of War. My um, brother-in-law played it on his PlayStation 4. It wasn't quite my game. Uh, I'm more of a... Uh, I enjoy games like Diablo 2, which I see has been remastered, and I think I'm going to get that for the new uh, Windows machine. And... What's the other one? Um, well, Tekken, obviously. Tekken's more fun though when you're playing against somebody else, yeah. rivalry situations as opposed to playing against robots. Likewise, things like um, Crash Team Racing. Though sadly with Crash Team Racing, the original was fantastic and they just proceeded to bugger it up thereafter. Yeah, instead of adding just more uh, tracks to the original version. They said, let's complicate it, make it fly through the air and special loop de doops and goodness knows what. It just kind of sapped the spirit of the original one. It's a bit like what they did with Diablo 3 versus Diablo 2. It took away what was the draw card of the game. Okie dokie dokie dokie. Let's see if we actually get something other than. Zero. There's a remake of Crash Team Racing. Well, hopefully they stuck the original then. Or something close to it. In fact, it's to the point where I play a game every now and then called um, Coffin Dodgers. Which is a better Crash Team Racing than the subsequent Crash Team Racing. It's not as good as the original. But it is better than the subsequent one. Okay, we've got 20 volts. Uh, we're picking up on the current... We actually might have a chance here, Jason. I might have... Oh, we've got a fan spin. I might have redeemed myself. This one tiny moment. We'll see. It may want the battery. I'm not sure. Can take a while for these things to come up. Ridge Racer on PlayStation 1. Hmm. But yeah, it's it's an unfortunate thing where they have these fantastic game mechanics and gameplay in the earlier versions and they just seem to lose sight of that was the thing that attracted everybody. Okay, I still have the screen on. I've got fan spin going. Mm, we're drawing 300, so I think I might plug the battery in. Like I said, sometimes these things do want their battery. Sometimes they just want you to be patient. <laughs> sometimes they want the screen to be plugged in. You didn't see that. It was an accident. It was an intentional accident. Carmageddon. That, um... Sounds familiar. There is a game I'm playing at the moment called um, Gas Guzzlers, and I think it's similar to Carmageddon. Twisted Metal, actually. No, that was what I was thinking of. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, Twisted Metal. Is that that's the one with the crazy, um, crazy clown car or uh, ice cream cart or something like that? 
Hey, there we go. Apple logo. Redeemed myself finally. Jason, yeah, the battery is puffy. Okay, we are booting. It's probably a low battery issue, but yeah, the battery is definitely puffy. That will need replacing, and that looks distinctly working. Yeah, mouse works. 12% battery. And it persists in staying on. Doing. Yep, it's alive. Okay. One win, 12 losses. I'm getting there. Anyway, at the end of the day, the point is, I don't feel like I need to keep this PlayStation. I think surplus to what I really need. Um, I probably can sell it for about 250 or something like that, maybe 275. I'm not sure what the market's like at the moment locally. That's Australian dollars, of course. All right, so in the end, that uh, wasn't too bad. That was a uh, more of a signature fault. It's Jason's probably kicking himself now because he was thinking I should have done that one myself. You know the creators of Gas Gaglers, do you, Dragon? Well, I quite like the game, I must say. It's violent, it's fast, but it's easy to play. Which is good for a person of my advancing gameplay age. So um, feel free to say thank you, but they've probably already heard that a thousand times. It's kind of like when people uh, say hello to me. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to disconnect? Still doing IMAX. Uh, I'm going to go pick up an IMAX tomorrow. It's a broken one. I'm just picking it up for parts so that I can start considering doing repairs. I never really do mail-in repairs for IMAX though. It's just too expensive and too risky to ship those things. But there's enough local people that have IMAX that it might be a, something for me to look at. The one I'm picking up tomorrow, it's a 2015, 21-inch version. Pardon me. Alright, next board. Look, you know what? What the heck? No, you aren't the same boards. I was going to say, why am I picking up... Okay. Yeah, it's picking up the wrong thing. It's picking up a 2011 1466. It's like, no. Alright, uh, we've got a 1466. This is a 165. It does have rework on it. Number five is alive. A lot of rework on it. SMC has been replaced. Now, this one's been through hell and back. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see if we have any chance of extra redeeming ourselves. We're in bonus points around now. Oh, okay, Jason, no worries. It's <laughs> kind of wondering if I should put it through the ultrasonic first. It's okay, we'll work from what we've got. It feels like... It feels like the, that connector there for the flat flex is actually a bit iffy. I know the other one's busted completely. And I need a... I need a chipmunk. Okay, chipmunk. See how we go. Dead. Well, it's very dead because the power supply is not turned on. Uh, 
That's interesting. That's bizarre. That's bizarre because we're showing 5 volt in SO state, but we do not have a fan spin. And we do not have blinky blink. We'll give it a few more seconds, but I suspect we don't have blinky blink, which means I'm then going to take the heat sink off and we're only drawing 197. So the CPU is not alive in this instance. Yeah. But that's a very weird combination. Check that SMC Rebuild. Mm, yeah. Well, it must be doing okay because we are getting our... Um, yeah, we are getting MagSafe light. Alrighty. It's just interesting we didn't get fan. Okay, yeah, see, this is what I was talking about. I could feel that that connector was a bit dodged up. So we can flush that out and maybe we get better behavior. Not that it should have actually affected the fan spin. There's a spot of corrosion on it. Hey, my repair. By the way, if I, I miss anyone, I'm sorry. Holy sh... Okay, he's replaced the MOSFETs. Or one of the MOSFETs. Okay, here we go. We're going to do a resistance check here. Uh, give me a resistance, please. A belief. Uh, thank you. And let's check our CPU resistance. 7 point, okay, that's okay. This is probably a 1.6 or a 1.8, I think. Cody, you snapped a Nintendo Switch board just to get reaction on... You cheap YouTube thrill chaser. Ah, oh, you should be disgusted in yourself. Yeah, it's a 1.6. Oh, where are those caps gone? Okay. Um, I would probably maybe consider looking at the clock circuit on this one. Although... Everything is equally fire trucked at this point. It really looks like holy mother of all that is horrible. Yeah, oh, this is good job. <laughs> this is um yeah, this is like having a bomb blast victim or a suicide uh, vest person being presented to the emergency ward in a bag and you have to put them back together. Okay, 342 has got to be working all right because we are getting max safe. So SMC is mostly going to be working all right. It's just very strange that we don't get a fan spin. Okay, that there is really dodgy and will have to be reworked. I'm going to check that I've got uh, 3v3 and then I'm going to pop the heatsink off the CPU. I mean that looks like it's been replaced as well. Putting back together like C3PO, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's weird. Where's my multimeter? Strange that they weren't there. Wonder why I turned them off. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They're back. Oh, something's burning me in on the corner. Yep, something's very much burning me. Wow. I don't know what voltage I was getting there, but something is burning down here, and it's hot. Very hot see what we got okay you yeah you like that do you you're angry you're so angry all right 
That was uh, just very lucky that my hand happened to be on that. Yeah, let's see what it is. See, Coda, thrill seeking. I bought a PlayStation 5 a few days ago, put the cost on the credit card just so I can clickbait the video. Yeah, you, you're sounding like a person who's lost their way. I think you need to return to the purity of the schematic. Chasing those subscribers and clickbait views. Don't you feel as though it's draining your soul of the happiness that you used to have? Okay. Alright, so it's a 5 VSO switch and that is why we did not get the fan. Alright, so basically to get 5 VSO, this switch needs to work properly. So now either we have a short on the 5 VSO side, which is entirely possible, and this is just behaving like you do with iPhones when you get um, a short on your on the PP bus after the MOSFET and the MOSFET gets all angry well that's basically what could be happening here so we're gonna have a look So pin 5, alright, so we'll check the resistance on that, yeah, okay, the switch itself is not faulty, we have a short, that's the problem, somewhere on 5 VSO we have a short, so we're going to do a voltage injection and find out where that short really is, as opposed to where this is pretending that it is. So this is in fact very much like the iPhone MOSFET situation. Yeah, the code, I actually sort of uh, rephrased that from the Vicar of Dibley. You know, there is a episode in the Vicar of Dibley where they have their book club. And they, um, the Geraldine she says, let us return to the purity of the original source. And it's, uh, I think they, I think they're reading Winnie the Pooh or something like that. Yeah, it was something about Igor. One where you're talking about um, uh, what's her name? Not Geraldine. Uh, yeah, the the young girl, the the ditzy one. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. And of course, we also lost um, uh, what's his name? God damn it, can't remember. The one that um, gets his stack of horse and man magazines confiscated I'm pretty sure that's a ground plane <laughs> it's going to suck if that's not ground yeah it is it goes around up to here Damn it, what was his name? I can't even think of his real name versus, and his um, character name. Ah. Yeah, that's bugging me. I hate it that I can't think of these things. Damn it. Well, I have to focus on this.
Alright, so we've got that set up. We've got the infrared camera. Six of the eight main stars of Dial. Sure. Jeez. Then again, it was a while ago, and most of them were old. Well, except uh, not all of them. Now, but what, what was his name? The the chap that yeah always had questionable sexual advances towards Geraldine and his animals. No, it wasn't Hugo. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't Frank. Yeah, not Hugo, not Frank. Damn it. Damn it. I gotta find out now. the chat window it's spectacular ball no, I think it was Owen God damn it, why have they... Why have they eliminated the pictures? I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Owen. God's sake. Can't a person just... Anyway, um, this chap here. Yeah, it was, it was Owen. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we lost him too. Anyway, back to the task at hand. That's connected. Right, we need to get the infrared running. Do not tell me that you have. If this has gone and done that thing that I, I don't know, it seems all right. Ah, uh, let me panic them because I was thinking, you know, I did not change to this older, lower kernel, only to. Okay, here we go. We're gonna put power on. We've got one air, uh, one volt, three amp going in. And it looks like we've found our shining star up here somewhere. Damn it, my body is hotter. That looks like the cap. Yep, that is the cap that's by the backlight. Thought that looked really shonky. We'll just go verify that visually. Yeah, creature. I don't. Yeah, at your level. I don't know if you're allowed to have such simple guesses. You should have actually said which cap it was going to be. 
you're technically competent enough that it should uh, you're a yep that's a nice little sizzle cap it's not funny thing is it's not massively shorted wait I just realized I'm a low current let's push that current up anyway it's that one Yeah, the creature, because he is an advanced electronics person, he needs to specifically state which cap it is. I'll be honest with you, Jason, I wouldn't trust this board, but I don't think you would either. Funnily enough, Creature, you know, the caps that they do put on these boards are usually quite high spec. I think that's more the problem than an actual uh, quality issue. The problem is that they go for the very high capacitance values in very small packages so they're really pushing the limits I mean, a lot of the time you can't even buy the capacitors that they're using at least it doesn't seem you can easily yeah they have values that when you say do a search on mouse uh, digi or farnell the uh, maximum sizes of microfarads you can get for that specific form factor is still well short on what Apple themselves are using. Alright, so that's removed that, so let us go see if we still have that short. Oh yeah, sure, the MBTFs are pretty useless because they've pushed them too far. Okay, we do not have a short anymore. So this probably will boot. We won't get a backlight. But this should at least give us a blinky blink. Once I... set my... Yeah, I really am not happy with the... memory recall selection system on this power supply. I do prefer the old style one where you just had the four buttons preset memories. This one you've got to go into menu, scroll down to what your preset is, and then hit it. Anyway, enough whining. Let's get on with testing. Oh, yeah, you want to see a fan spin? There's a fan spin for you. Are we blinked yet? Hey, we're alive. I wouldn't really make a big song and dance about being alive because that's a pretty awful state of living. It's a learning board. All right, well, we'll correct the learning board, get it back up and running, and see if that backlight even runs. Definitely I'll put it through an ultrasonic. I might replace that uh, resistor there too. Kind of reminds me of my donor boards. I'll periodically put them through the ultrasonic cleaner just to... Now that... I don't know what kind of solder that is, but uh, that looked like solder paste that hadn't yet... Yeah, that was solder paste that had not yet actually fully formed. That was interesting.
I'll grab a donor board. Hey, cobwebs. I saw a part sitting in the middle of the board looking all diagonal for a second there. Well, that's not well put down. Come on, Paul. Okay. I'm actually being a little bit judicious with the flux there simply because it will have a positive effect on cleaning up other areas around it. Well, it's worth seeing if this actually gives us an image. Hey, Denam Rose. How's it going over there? Alright, flat flex, flat flex. And a Macos boot stick. And a MagSafe cable. No, oh, we do not have a fan spin again. Oh yeah, we do. That was weird. That actually took longer than I expected to boot. Oh no, Wong Wei is one of those tomato sauce people that just have it on everything. Oh no. I don't mind tomato sauce on some things, but um, I'm pretty sparing with it. Hey, CD. How do you clean up all the underfill off without ruining board? You need to get yourself, um, uh, well, I guess everybody's got their ways. I've got a, oh, did I have a tool? I've got like, it looks like a little hockey stick leg thing. And it shaves the underfill off. But you still got to be so careful with that. How's the leader been? She hasn't visited in a while. She's busy playing Seven Days to Die. She's ensuring that her f fortress can take a beating. She's crazy though. She's set every night to be a um, horde night. So completely, completely utterly bonkers. So we've got a 1.6 i5, 4 gigs. Yep, that's all jolly good. And nothing is out of spec so I'm happy with that okay that one's fixed too and that definitely is going to go for a long bath in the ultrasonic
It seems fast now. Well, yeah, I don't know what's going on then. It's even more interesting for the fact that I don't even have a battery installed. We'll see how it goes when it's been ultrasonic. Maybe the ultrasonic will revert it back to its old slow state. Nothing like the joy of cleaning a board only to find that it underperforms thereafter or fails to perform. It's like, hey, I'll fix the board. Now I'll wash it. And then when you wash it, it stops working. Yeah, stuff like that makes you cry. Okay, 2.12. Yes, indeed. Okay, we're just going to... Oh, Jason, obviously, I don't know how your stickers are going to go through the ultrasonic, though. I'm sure you're not going to be too concerned about that. You will get off. The slowness might have been the junk in the... Um, in this connector. And it looks like you got some copper corrosion there, but it's probably not. I'll have a test later to see if the heat pipe is running properly. I should have done that when it was running. Oh, well, I couldn't test it there. Yeah. When I put it back together, I'll test it under the infrared again and see if the heat pipe's running properly. Okay. Okay, UM5, you're in the queue for a bath. Does it work on battery? I didn't check. I can check that now. No, it should do, but we will check. Can't believe you're making me do this. We'll just plug it in. See if it charges and see if it boots and see if it runs battery only. It would appear it is charging. We've got over one amp coming up. We bonged. Yeah, it's running off battery, so it's all good. We'll wait for it to blink again, though. Unless it's gone to sleep now. Yep, yeah, it's all good. When will Elita stream? I'm not sure. One day, I guess. She's got her iMac now. She's got her um, MacBook. She's got an iPhone. She's got everything. But, oh, actually, no. We need to. I need to get her more lighting. In fact, I need to get myself more lighting. But everything bit at a time takes time. Okay. Alright. Next one from the queue. What have we got here? And it's missing a great big inductor. Well, there's a Big inductor there, but I'm not sure where that went. Ah, there, right. Uh, 
Uh, this is a backlight, the backlight output issue. Oof. Alright, it's been sitting there a while. You can tell it's been sitting there a while because the flux has started to pull the copper out of things. Absolutely destroyed that cap there. There's a colossal hole in the board. Who knows? That might not actually be fixable. Yeah, it's a it's a nasty burn through short that one. All right, let's get the clean up process and then we'll have a look at what we got after that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you messaging. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get my butt in the right place here. Add some more flux. Try not to upset the Wi Fi chip. Ah, uh, there's a big hole. It stinks too. So, no clean flux, how clean is it in your eyes? Mm, I still tend to always prefer to wash it off. Because, yeah, you get that sort of situation where it does still draw copper out of the board, so... Okay, is that ground? Yeah, okay. Alright, see, so the problem we've got here is that we've got a ground layer directly underneath. So, it makes it tricky. We kind of have to clean it up, pair back that top layer with, and then insulate it away from the ground layer. And then find our way to the back light. That's fun stuff. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, no blue sky, Amtech actually has multiple different kinds of flux anyway. And that's the old version. The It's not the old version, it's the new version that is now going to be replaced by the old version. Oof. I'll be isolating it with UV mask. And probably hot glue. Because what solution isn't right without a bit of hot glue? Of course, it still doesn't solve the problem. We've still got to see if we need to get backlight out or not. So basically you need to peel this layer back a bit but not cut through the fiberglass layer. See what doesn't help in this situation is that because it's backlight it's going to be at a moderately high voltage and that high voltage if you're edge on as we are in this case to another layer this case being ground then given that it's only a very small distance between it is um, will not be unusual for it to just make the short journey to shorting okay, so we're going to go for a bit of an iPhone style of things here 
any Jason Vilma was around, he'd appreciate it. And I have got the wrong kind of tip on this at the moment, the blade. As in, I have shaved or modified this blade to be a uh, soft rounded tip, so I'm going to actually change the blade. Did you get the new Amtrak, Amtrak flux? Um, okay, what's happened with the Amtrak flux is I did order what I thought was going to be the new flux and they thought they had sent me the new flux but there was an issue in the manufacturing of that particular batch and they are subsequently sending me a replacement batch or a replacement order which is the one that should be the correct stuff. It's not that it's specifically bad flux, the stuff that they've sent me, but it is, you know, it is not what was ordered, as it were. I'm happy with my, I mean, I can get surgical ones and all that, but I've got many, many years of using the Exacto number 11s with my model aircraft and balsa so in terms of hand feel I am most confident with these anyway you can see what I mean I've, I've used the new tip and subsequently I've been able to just nicely roll that back so we have a good safety margin between the backlight output and this hellish nightmare down here we're also going to have to cut off this section here I feel I do not feel like it's a good idea to you know, these are backlight output caps as well, so we have to cut it probably back here. We lose one cap, but it's not a big problem. Tonto B, are you, which one are you using? Because, you know, there's many different Amtec fluxes. And there is the one, the new one should smell really nice. And again, it all comes down to what you're using it for. If you use the wrong kind of flux for the wrong task, then yeah, it's going to suck. Or I should rather say, just simply if you use the wrong kind of flux, it's going to suck. It's like me trying to make this flux work for situations where I really should have a flux with a much lower viscosity. And I kind of cheat by heating it up or dissolving it a little more into um, RPA. Like I said, it's all a cheat to get around my laziness. Okay, you can see why this was having recurring problems now. The protective barrier of the circuit board layer, it had been eaten away under that copper layer and that's why it was probably persistent in shorting out. It may still have problems elsewhere on the board, but this is why it was important to cut this layer back because if we didn't we would not have seen that would have put parts back on and then boom it would have been dead again so yeah that's why we have to cut back Oop, that is the micro call no, oh, someone's messaging me. Sorry. What? What? Weird. I had a message come through and it was like, oh, sorry, that was for the iMac guy. And it's like, I am the iMac guy. That is me. Where'd it go though? Damn it. It's probably someone someone backing out of a deal. Come on, tell me you're backing out of a deal. Hmm. Oh, hey, yeah, Jason. Hmm. 
Oh, right. Now I understand. I get it. I get it. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> I was being stupid. All right. Okay, so let's wash this up a bit more. Let's have a look at that cavity. I guess my other problem is how far does that cavity go down? That's a real concern. Because it's charred the um, fiberglass layer. Okay, so no short there, no short there. Okay, so that seems fine. We might be okay at this point. Yeah, can't really tell until we fully put it back up. But I'm going to have to leave you there for a second because I've got to go do micros insulin and then I'll be back.
New gloves. Headset on. Sometimes it only takes a few seconds to sort micro out, sometimes it takes a few minutes. Yeah, it really depends on his mood for the night. Yeah. Like any kid, he can get a little bit c cantankerous or temperamental about the fact that he has to have an injection. I mean, it's it's drama enough that it's once a year, if it was once a day, but the fact that it's twice a day, you know, it does sort of wear down on him occasionally. You know, some days he just really doesn't want to deal with it. He's um, yeah, I mean, he's doing okay, but obviously, it is always something to keep watching out for. Some days are better than others. He's got a bad habit of getting into food that he shouldn't, and we've got to work on preventing that. Sort of keep hoping that we can get his stress levels back down quite a bit, because if we can do that, cats do have the impressive ability of being able to recover or um, go into remission when it comes to diabetes. It's quite unusual, but it is something they can do. Okay, I'm just going to put some UV down there. <laughs> okay, I sort of just don't know if it's going to work out so well. Normally I do this for painting, but we kind of got more of a fill up situation, so I'm just going to scrape it off the stick and then splotch it back down. It's probably a little bit thick. This UV cure stuff doesn't really like being made thick like that. It has a tendency to not cure through properly. And there is my UV pen. How'd you find out? Um, Q's tech, it's difficult to describe basically they lose weight they keep trying to eat but they're just not putting on weight and yeah they are just uh, there's a lot of different potential symptoms it's one of those things where you really should just go to the vet they typically diagnose it symptomatically like that and then confirm with a blood test along with a urine test the urine test was actually the hardest thing to get. No blue scar, that's no good. Did it, um, did he come good or no good? Got the same UV light. Did I recommend that today? I, I fail to remember. Oh, I find I get the same problems with the green or many of the other colours. Like, even with the original green, you would... If you put it in too thick, it just doesn't make its way through. I am going to cheat and use a bit of heat on this. I don't generally like using heat to cure the UV because it does change its properties. Uh, 
Uh, Jim Annan, I haven't looked at Metaform. Not sure what that is even. Yeah, Tony, trying to get a um, ear vein blood test is actually the thing that we find the most difficult. We very rarely get a chance to do that with micro. So unfortunately, we kind of, you know, we, you know, we feel bad because we feel like we're not quite keeping up our end of the bargain with looking after him properly because we don't do like weekly or even day yet blood glucose level tests however because we are with him all the time like you know we're here all the time we can monitor him very well symptomatically and there are a lot of telltale telltale signs that we can pick up if his uh, blood sugar is getting a bit high Okay, diabetes medicine for adults. Hmm. Oh, look at it. It may not, it may not uh, work with animals, you know, cats or something like that. But I'll have a look at it. It, it is funny that some things will work between, you know, across uh, species, and other things will not. Oh no, Tony, I knew, I know you weren't implying it was easy. I was just rather saying, yeah, it's one thing that we definitely do not find easy. What, 250? That's lame. Give me 470. God damn it. There we go. Yeah, the same ductus. It seemed okay. It had a little bit of charring on the bottom corner, but it hadn't done anything really. It was more the burn off from the cap. Ah, I always turn off the extractor before I get a chance to cool the board. I will say this though. It is easier still to give a cat an injection, like an insulin injection, than it is to give them a pill. happens Let's see if we do actually get a booting system or whether it's all up the creek yeah we do have a booting system by the looks of it we just need a test chassis now uh, 1708 or 1706 either one will do the trick This 
might work. Plus, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about injections, yeah, it's insulin injections that are pretty easy. It's um, Some other type of injections can be a little bit more difficult. But the insulin one's not too bad. Okay, hopefully this doesn't um, obliterate my backlight of my um, screen. Because <laughs> these screens are expensive. Even still, you know, they're like 500 bucks or so. There we go. So I'll down the option key. Try oh, there's no point. I don't have a keyboard connected. I'm not sure if anything's happening yet. The fan doesn't spin on these things for a while. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I probably shouldn't bother with the boot stick. I should just let it come up flashing folder. I'm going to gather that we probably don't have a backlight here at this point. Killed a GPU, iGPU of seemingly working screen last month. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I've had similar scenarios to that. CPU is warm. Okay, I'm going to guess we don't actually have a backlight. Oh. Yes, we do. It was just hanging up on that. So there we go. So it picks up any of the networks. Hmm. I should have at least picked up my A network. going to plug in these Wi-Fi cables and see if it does because you know I was complaining that the Wi-Fi might be a bit close to where the backlight was Seems like we've got a few diabetics in channel. Pulverize the cat. Oh, okay. We use cream cheese. Okay, well, we do have a working network there, so all right, that's good. All right, Jason, that one might also be fixed. I'm just going to plug this in, see if it reacts to it. seems not to. I can't plug the keyboard in at the moment I don't think because I'm pretty sure I uh, will try. Option. Who would think that people sitting around a lot of work in electronics might be diabetic? I don't know. That seems a little uh, bit of a long drawer of the bow to assume that people who don't move around a lot and maybe eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> no, no uh, it's a bit of speculative there. That's the fun of the science, is trying to work out whether it's causative or correlated. Probably takes a good 20 years to um, determine that. Oh, no, it's okay, Justin. I've actually got a few of these test drives myself. I just didn't bother to plug one in. 
but I, I do have a few of them. I'm just kind of expecting it to boot off the stick, and it may yet come up, but we'll give it another minute. Electronics repairs make you dielectric. <laughs> well, that's just shocking. Big Clive found out a lot of technical people are gay and furry. Well, that's just even weirder. Your computer restarted because of a problem. Please wait. Oh, gee. Oh, well, it's going to go boot into it anyway. Unless this is booting into a recovery petition. But I don't think there is one on there. Keith McDermott, your Type 2 is... Type 2 is that the... Um, what do you call it? That's the diet related one, isn't it? So we've got two type twos, maybe more. I do need to improve on my diet considerably. I do have a sweet tooth. Um, I don't eat a lot of sugar, but I know I do have a craving for it. And I'm definitely not as mobile as I usually should be at this age. And I'm carrying about, I would say, at least 10 kilos more than I should at this point. Miles, you're told no more coffee. Why no more coffee? I mean, what if you had coffee without sugar? Travis, you are a bit like my wife. She would sooner die than get a needle. Fortunately, I do periodically check my blood sugar level, and I'm usually, you know, around about 6.7 or something like that. But, uh, and my blood pressure is pretty good these days. I'm back down to, if I'm not panicking and stuff, I'm back down to about 125, 130 over 80, 85, which is pretty good for me. I do suffer white coat syndrome, so that tends to push it up any time I go to the doctors. Uh, what the fire truck? Where are you? What? Oh, this is going to say, do you want to recover your password? I'm pretty sure this is going to be a password recovery option. Oh, it's a caffeine. Oh, okay. Hmm, interesting. I, I don't know what this is doing. Yeah, it is a reset password. Yeah. Exito. Now Butio. Travis, that is definitely something I've got to start doing, is drinking a lot more water. I don't have an aversion to water. It's just a case of... You just forget to drink it. You, I essentially... I will drink water. If there is a bottle of water by me, I will drink that. But to actually get up and go and get water to drink, I tend not to. I go for water and I end up coming back with coffee. Uh, Tony, you know, I'm pretty much uh, falling straight into that pattern with not having a proper eating pattern, so yeah. And that's not good on my behalf. Here we go, I think we've got it. But I'm not surprised, Tony, I'm not surprised. And I think a lot of people will be falling for that sort of thing, because, you know, we get up in the morning... And we are compelled to, you know, we try to think to, say, take 10 minutes and just, you know, slowly wake up, get your breakfast and things like that. But you know that there's all these things that are pending on the other side of a phone or message system. And, you know, the longer you wait, the worse it gets. So it's a little bit of a um, industry or work issue, I suppose. 
Anyway, so this is working, Jason. So another happy fix. I think if we hadn't cut that copper layer back, it would have definitely killed itself again. Hey, Rillanico. Fortunately, I am not stuck at a desk all day. I do spend a tremendous amount of time walking around. Jim, yeah, I suffer very badly from lack of sleep. I would say six hours is a pretty normal amount for me, which is insufficient. Seven hours I would consider to be an acceptable level. Things are getting better, though. I will certainly say that. Things are definitely getting better The um, with owning the house now. The fur kids have sort of gotten into their routine, and so they don't tend to disturb us as much. If anything, we tend to wake up now more simply out of habit of having been woken up constantly for the last two, three years, you know, and living on broken, sporadic sleep. But now that we finally have the opportunity to actually sleep, we have to reset our minds to be able to relax enough to actually sleep. So it's it's an interesting situation. Yeah, Tony, I, it is for now, but I guess, like what you can imagine, I don't want to depend on that, as it were. I don't want to just look at that and go, you know what, I'm fine, because that's fine. I don't want to see that that buffer eroded. I've already feel like I've eroded away all my other buffers, like my sleep, my eating, my exercise. I feel like I have used up those buffers from medical issues and so if my I don't want to just sort of go well I'm okay because you know I'm still in the good range because I figure or I worry that one day I guess I shouldn't be worrying too much but I worry that one day that's going to start creeping up and it'll be all too late but yeah I mean we all feel that way it's like you know you look at your gut and you sort of go hmm you know I really should get that under control And even if you have the willingness to do it, the problem can still be the opportunity to do it. Now, I know some people say, well, you make the opportunity. But I think that's not always a fair statement to make to people. Because honestly, you don't always know what's going on in, other, in people's lives. It could very well be that there are that many things tugging on every minute of their day that they really don't have an opportunity. And it's not just a case of, I'm going to take an opportunity to make myself this time today. At least not realistically. All right. Well, that's fixed. Thank goodness for that. We're actually having some success for a change. Yeah, sleeping is very important. And like I said, you know, we're finally getting that back. But I've got to admit that I am quite concerned about the fact that for the last three years, we have not had good sleep. And it's honestly, it's kind of felt like, you know, when you see parents and they've got newborns or whatever, and they come to the door and they look like near death because they've only had four hours sleep or no sleep or things like that. We basically were living like that for the last three years. And like I said, we're very happy we've got the house now, my blood pressure's down, that sort of anxiety's gone. But we do have to make amends or pay back in terms of our health to get things back on track before we, you know, before things start going wrong. Alright, three for three indeed, and this one's also going to go into the ultrasonic. But, um, yeah, so we had to remove one cap position there but given that there's what is there like 20 caps on there for the backlight we can afford to lose that one and at least it all works and that's the most important thing okay yippee another fix i think we'll try to do one more and then i'll call it for the night because i do have to take the trip to townsville tomorrow 
Let's see, what did I do with the original one? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, I gotta prep that. Yep, alright, all good. Exactly, Miles, that's right. You can only burn the candle from both ends and the middle <laughs> for so long. Uh, Jason, any particular preference on what you'd like next? So basically we've got the 1502, another 1502. This one's got a whopping great big wire in it. I'll probably be disinclined to chase that one. Uh, what have we got? I can't read the number on that one. This is one where you said it's either going to be 8900. Oh, no, that's been cremated. That's a cremation job. Or a 1466 with a botched up connector. 1398 it is. Alright. Probably VRMs maybe, but that's that's a bad burn job there. So we're off to a bad start. Let's have a look. Now Jason gets to decide. Okay, we've got a 3787. Worst case scenario, Jason, I can actually just give you one of mine. And we do have the 6808s on it, and we do have liquid trash in there. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. I'd, it looks more like it was just the adhesive on it, but this, the VRMs have been uh, heated up. Kind of reminds me of, you see over in Japan, they have these competitions to see who can shave off the longest, thinnest piece of wood from a log, or a plank of wood. It's a pretty awesome competition really, you know, because it, it's a lot of skill to, and reading of the wood and everything like that, to be able to do that sort of thing. I mean, I guess... I guess it's sort of I find it fascinating because I can appreciate the difficulty involved in what they're trying to do. That bug is from my workshop. Okay, we've had some flux and heat up here. Looks like around here, maybe two. What is this? A 2.316. Okay. So it's a pretty decent board. So, what was the fault on this? It just keeps shutting down or something else? Is it Hakone? Is it Hakone or Hakone? Okay, I need to get myself a MagSafe thingy me jiggy wiggy. Wiggity wiggy. And like magic, we fixed it already. This is actually one that does work. You're worried about the CPU. Alright. Let's have a looky loo. We'll check the CPU resistances for a start. So it's a good good starting point on these machines. Helps if I don't have junk on my tip. Let's see. Yeah, that's not a good sign right off the bat. Nor is the fact that the, let's see, okay. So 
So what do we got? Yeah, that's that's pretty much a dead CPU, I'm sorry. Point six. That's very dead. That's okay. That's um GPU ish, I think. That's okay. But yeah, I think the three fa yeah, the three phase is gone. Now it could be the VRMs. So I'll I'll take the VRMs off and see if the resistance changes, but it looks like it's a dead CPU at this point. Oh crikey Anel's here. Hello Anel. How are you, Anel? Why are you here, Anel? Have you come to taunt us? Yeah, so we'll take the VRMs off. And if that hasn't brought the resistance back up, we'll then see if we can find any caps. We'll put a in voltage injection in and see what happens. Chances are the CPU is just going to get warm. Hey, Textralian. Uh, I could take the heatsink off, but I'm leaving it there for now while I'm extracting the VRMs. I don't normally get... You don't normally get visual defects on these ones for when the CPU fails. Not like the 165s. trying to warm up everything around here because we've got to go down the line a bit. I love it how the inductors move off before you even get to the VRMs. The hardest one is the one that we're about to get to. Well, oh, puppy noises, that's not good. Yeah, this one's hard. I actually have to remove the screw for this one. Otherwise that will get projected into my face. So we'll keep the heat sink there, and if Graham from Adamant IT is here, he will laugh at this for reasons that we know. Nice and hot. Alright, let's see. Yeah, well, I could have actually just taken the inductors off, but the thing is that one way or another, the uh, MOSFETs or the VRMs have to come off regardless. Uh, still looking pretty bad there. 0.3, that's not good. Yeah, I'm going to say it's probably CPU. We'll just take all the, we'll take the heat sink off, we'll inject a little bit of voltage and see where we get the warmth.
Kind of have to cool the board down a bit though. Perfectly good donor board. That's that's a good way of describing it. Yes. Let's see if I can pick up some more tomorrow as well. When I go into towns, we'll see if I can see if my supplier has obtained any more. Alrighty. Right, injection time. May as well keep the fan going. Hey, toast tech. Alexander Costa. It doesn't really matter what side you put the wire on, on the inductor. This is our ground. Jim Cam is going to struggle a little bit simply due to the fact that the board is still quite hot from the removal of the VRMs. But hopefully we will get some shining, well, I don't want to say hopefully, but we may get a shining star coming through from the CPU die. I will definitely not be putting 18 volts into it though. I think we'll try a nice safe 0.8 volts. And 3 amps should be fine. Okay. Let's, let's crank it to 40 with 10 amp. <laughs> no, if only my power supply could do that. I can put it up to... It'll probably max out at about 5... Uh, 5 watts if I'm lucky. Perhaps less. But uh, we'll see. When the power supply is limited to 5 amps output, that's pretty much what your uh, constricting factor is going to be. Uh, I just noticed the power supply isn't actually running at the moment. So let me correct that. Play ball, eh? Okay, infrared is running, so let's switch over to that. Get the alignment right. Yeah, it's pretty close. So as you can see, the board itself is pretty warm, the wood board. All right, so here we go for three amps and 0.81 volts. You got two watts, and you can see it's starting to get a little yellow on that CPU over there. You can see it just this section here it's starting to get warm. Alright, let's uh, 
All right, so Jason gives the approval of the crank up. So let's go. Let's see. One volt. Yeah, it's maxing out at three amps at the moment. So we've only got one, two amps to go. And that's it. There you go. That's as hard as I can drive it. But it is a very dead CPU, unfortunately. Uh, there's no great spectacular explosions, I'm afraid. To do that, I would have to bring out one of my old power supplies that can generate uh, 20 amps. And then you would most definitely get a spectacular kabang if I did that. So, if you want a kabang, I can bring out the old power supply. in like 50 years. You disgust me. What is this? 13.8 volts. Oh, it's a 12 amp. My bad. Still, it's a lot more than 5. Not to mention it probably doesn't have good current limiting. Yeah, this... Oh, you can't see. Well, we'll quit this. We know that it's getting hot there. And go to the overhead. So yeah, this is very dodgy quality type power supply system. I used to actually sell quite a lot of these. <laughs> we sell them for people who, when you're in the model aircraft and you wanted to charge your lithium packs, you needed to have a fair amount of current, um, but the charger itself would need like you know, 13, 14 volts, and it would regula regulate it down. Okay, let's get the valuable gym cam out of the way. I don't know if this is going to go bang, but it'll be an experiment. Uh, got any more? Yes, I do. I'm just getting some more multimeter leads. These ones are a bit thicker and a bit shorter. Can you fix by swapping the CPU? Not realistically, no. Nah. The limiting factor is going to be those two wires going off to the board. I will put this under the microscope before I fire it up. Okay. And since I have not run this device in such a long time, I'm going to plug it in to the safety unit. Because I don't know what state any of these things are in. Okay, that's in. I need some safety glasses. You may think I'm being pedantic, but really, flying hot silicon is not fun. In my crew. Microscope time. Okay, so we're focused on the region and we're zoomed out the best we can. Whew. Alrighty. Okay, so here we go. Well, I don't know how this is going to go. So, we go three, two, one, on. <laughs> it did it. Oh, that stinks. 
Oh, well, at least the power supply still works. For a moment then I thought it wasn't going to do anything, but it actually delivered. Well, it's 60 frames per second, so you can always slow it down by half. And you might get something. Okay, take my safety power supply away. Now that stinks. I do wonder how many horrible, horrible chemicals we're exposing ourselves to every time these things blow up. It's uh, quite some interesting layers there. Let's see if I can go get some more light. interesting section of the board. It's like a very fine pitch ball grid array within the whole assembly. Yeah. Well, I guess we kind of fixed the short circuit at least. Too bad we took out everything else. Hey Nell, thanks for that. Thanks for the 199 US. Alright. They are not the balls from underneath the chip. They are much finer. They're like... Oh, sorry. You mean beneath the die. Yeah, I'm not even sure, really, to be what their specific purpose is. What sort of uh, part of the strata layer they are. Because obviously they're not the ones going to the circuit board. Anyway. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Should have taken it to the Apple shop. Would have damaged it. Nah, yeah. They would have laughed at me. Alright, hopefully someone time marks that explosion. I don't know where the... Oh, is this the top piece? I think this is the piece that got popped off. I'm trying not to damage it. Oh no, I think that... Oh. You know what? I can't tell. My eyes are too... I can't tell if that's a copper we cut off the... No, that's part of the CPU. That is really interesting. Yeah, Miles, that's why I'm not touching it with my fingers. I was using tweezers. Yeah, that's why I also wear safety glasses, because exactly, you know, this stuff here, that will cut right through you, no problem. And that jaggedy edge stuff will get stuck in you, and then you'll probably get silicosis in your finger, even though that's not a thing. Well, the... The rest of the die is obviously still there, but there was just a portion of it, but yeah. Anyway. Oh, you mean like, okay, yeah, that is the entire silicon wafer section. I think this is just the carrier. That's the carrier portion to take it to the um, chip. It's a cough. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's enough fun for tonight. I now have other things to do. Administration work. Yay! But you got to do this sort of paperwork crap in order to keep businesses running. If you don't do the paperwork crap, then eventually the tax man comes knocking, and then he takes you away for a nice little holiday in a place you don't want to be. So, okay. Well, I'm out of here. You'll take care. Try not to blow up your chips, and I'll see you next time. Until then, catch you later.